Business is going well. You have a nice cadre of products and your customers are generally pretty happy. It's probably a good time to scale the business at this point. But before you start looking at a new location, maybe there's another cost effective way to do just that. Should you do a joint venture? Maybe. But remember, you're an entrepreneur and a bit of a control freak. That's something we probably should work on later, Startup Nation. But for now, let's do something that will force us to be creative and imaginative. I got it. Let's launch a new product. My name is Dominic Lawson, and this is The Startup Life. Let's begin. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother... Hey, Startup Nation. Do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own luck, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. Today, we're going to talk about launching a new product. So in the first segment, we'll talk about sparking the brain of creativity so that way we can try to figure out what kind of product we want to start in the first place. Next, we'll talk about the actual development of uh, the product development process. You don't want to miss that. We'll take a break and then we'll talk about how you want to launch that new product. It definitely is a process that you don't want to miss. And then lastly, Startup Nation, we'll talk about the product life cycle. Every entrepreneur needs to know about that cycle from the beginning to the end. So I hope you're ready to receive great value today and let's take flight. So Startup Nation, the first thing you need to know about yourself about spark and creativity is that you are a creative person. Everybody is a creative person. Look, not everybody is a a painter or a musical artist, whatever the case may be, but just because you don't do those things doesn't mean that you're not creative. You probably find creative ways to do things with your children at home. You probably find creative ways to do things on your job. And if you have your business, you're, I'm pretty sure you're creative in how you scale your business, how you market your business, how you sell to your customers, how you evaluate and give out customer service. So understand that when you're developing a new product and you feel like you're not, you don't have that creative gene and you want to hire out, just know that you are creative. And honestly, you wouldn't be an entrepreneur if you weren't creative in the first place. So remember that. Now, let's say you get into a point where you just kind of feel stuck, right? So let's talk about a few things that we can do to kind of get unstuck from the creative process. One thing that that some people do is that they meditate. They go out of the business. They just like stop, close their eyes, and they just breathe, and they just talk it through, and they just kind of clear their mind, right? Just kind of reach this level of zen, if you will. Uh, Some people like to exercise as well, but um, when you're talking about meditating, it's one of those things where you're trying to release your brain of all the noise outside. You're trying to release your brain of everything that's kind of blocking and stymieing the creative process. So think about, you know, meditating. Some people like to light incense when they meditate. Some people like to uh, twiddle a fidget spinner, if you will. So try meditating. And when you're trying to get those creative juices flowing. Also, Startup Nation, and this is probably one of the things that I like to do when I kind of hit that funk, if you will, or trying to be creative. I take a walk. I take a walk. And so a lot of times when you go for a walk, you, you have these things that kind of trigger uh, creativity. It may be somebody who's walking, listening to music. It could be somebody who's doing their job. It could be the traffic light. It could be a restaurant nearby. You just never know. It could be the colors uh, that those that that restaurant has as its color scheme. You just never know uh, what may spark that creative mindset, that creative juice, if you will. So try taking a walk. Just kind of go outside, take it all in, get a few you know deep breaths of fresh air. And just try to see if we can get the creative juices flowing that way as well. Another thing Startup Nation can do is listen to music. I love music. Most people love music. And so when you listen to music, it kind of, you know, 
it's almost kind of like a, uh, you know, like the paddles. If you're a doctor and you're trying to jumpstart somebody's heart, music is able to do that as well. And hell, while you're at it, you might as well dance. That's another way to kind of spark creativity, right? Because once again, in order to recite music or listen to music or to dance or whatever, it takes a certain level of just letting it all go and just kind of just being loose and free. Or whatever right and so you can kind of see it as meditating but it's kind of meditating with movement right so think about maybe like listening to music and just kind of dancing and just like letting it all go now one thing you could also do start automation is to write ideas in a journal like the first thing that comes into your mind or have somebody you know put flash cards up and then the first thing that comes to your mind when you see that flash card write it down or when you have thoughts just out in the open uh, you know, if you're like a networking event or a business meeting, you just have a thought or an idea, make sure you write that down and journal it. The thing is, is like when you hit that creative stump, uh, that's a great resource to go to when you're um, trying to figure out what kind of product you want to develop, what kind of things you think the marketplace is looking for. OK, so when you talk about taking down a journal, make sure you're thoughtful and make sure you want to write down the first thing that comes to your mind. Right. And if you want to. Uh, you know, some people like to just take like 30 minutes each day and just write whatever comes to their mind. Right. It, it really is kind of like jump starting, you know, the brain of creativity. It really is one of those things that, you know, could really help you in trying to create that new product, if you will. Also, Startup Nation, some people go on what is called an artist date. Now, what is an artist date? This is one of those things where you go and you do something that's maybe a little bit out of your comfort zone or something that's kind of like a team building exercise or whatever the case may be. One thing that me and Kenda do is that we love to go to escape rooms, right? It's one of those things where it's like a puzzle and it, it starts to get the brain moving and start to get those the uh, synapses and neurons firing, if you will, in order to try to spark the brain of creativity. So, you know, maybe you want to go into a networking event. Maybe you want to go to a uh, art opening. Maybe you want to go to a, see a play. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. Maybe you want to go skydiving. Maybe you want to go rock climbing or snowboarding or whatever the case may be. Go do something that's out of the norm that maybe even scares you a little bit. And that's okay. Like I said, we want to get out of that comfort zone because that's the only place where the growth is. The only place you can grow is outside of the comfort zone. And that way you can come up with new ideas, spark new innovations in your business and also in your new product that you're trying to launch. Another thing you can do, Star Automation, is just get the hell out of town. You just take a trip. Like, take a one-day trip. Uh, I know a lot of times we like to take staycations, if you will, but this is one of those times where you probably need to see something new. It's a lot like the, the previous thing I was talking about, like the artist date. You should probably go out of town. You don't have to go anywhere too far right now. If you can go to, I don't know, Beijing or somewhere and you got, you know, you daddy deep pockets like that, then that's fine. That's that's all great. But, you know, it really doesn't take you long or very far to go on a re legitimate trip, if you will. If it's like 30 miles out of your way, if it's 40 miles out of your way, the idea is to go and see something that you don't necessarily see every day. You don't necessarily have to see something exactly brand new, but just kind of immerse yourself in a in a setting that you don't really see every day because a lot of times the same setting will spark the same type of ideas. And so you'll just be kind of running on that on that uh that hamster wheel uh, of creativity and you'll never really get nowhere fast, right? So Try thinking about just getting out of town, just getting out of Dodge. Go over to the next county, if you will. Think about that when you're talking about sparking creativity. And lastly, Star Nation, and this is one of those things where it's a little bit out of the box, but I think it can be worth it. Uh, remember that journal we talked about? Take that same journal and keep it on your nightstand. And when you go to sleep at night, you know I mean, and then when you wake up the next morning from, you know, from sleep, record your dreams. Record what you saw. Record as much as you can remember from your dreams because the thing is a lot of times when we talk about follow your dreams the answer is literally in your dreams and so record everything and i know and, and the thing is people don't realize this but like you dream every night every time you go to sleep at night you actually do have dreams but not everybody remembers them okay so it, it's one of those things where recording those dreams is just another form of journaling and it can spark brand new ideas even if it's a situation where it shows you in your dream, you know, having lots of money or being really poor or in for some reason, uh, a certain uh, 
podcast host dream seems to be about being in, I don't know, the American Revolutionary War or World War II or something like that. I must have this thing for war movies. I don't know. But uh, record your dreams. Everything that's in there, it doesn't matter because you never know what may inspire you moving forward to launch that new product. All right. So we've got the creative juices flowing. We, we're, we've looked in our journal. We've recorded our dreams. We've took a, taken a walk and things of that nature. And so now this is the actual process of developing the new product. So the first part of that is the idea generation and screening process. This is the point where you start jotting down actual product ideas. And this can be from a brainstorming session or it can be from uh, you having a meeting with your team or whatever, right? And this is probably one of those times where you want to do what is called a SWOT analysis. And SWOT, W-S-O-T, stands for Strengths, Weaknesses, Opportunities, and Threats. And I'll probably go into a little bit more deeper detail what a SWOT analysis is in a later episode, Startup Nation. But your strengths and weaknesses are internal, meaning that the strengths and weaknesses of what of your company, your firm, whatever the case may be. The opportunities and the threats are things that are external, right? So the opportunities could be what the marketplace is looking for. The threats can be, I don't need to really say it, but it's your competitor. The competitor could be a threat. So this is the process where you may want to do a SWOT analysis when you're thinking about the idea generation and screening process. This is the part where you want to weed out everything but the best idea possible. So uh, a lot of times firms have what is called like a, a a red team or whatever, right? So the red team's job when in the innovation or idea screening process is to make sure they poke holes in everything, every single best idea you have. Like their purpose is to be a negative Nancy, right? But that's a good thing, right? It, 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 forces, it forces you and challenges you to put the best idea and the best product forward. One of the things a, a, a red team would do in your firm is that they're going to ask you is the product that you're trying to create is it like a, a passion product or a staple product okay so let me explain that a little bit a staple product is something that that is like you know that everybody will generally like right so for instance if you're looking for a, a cheeseburger right let's say you have a restaurant and you're trying to create a che a new cheeseburger, right? You're pretty safe because most of all, most people like cheeseburgers. A lot of people like cheeseburgers, right? So you got like your your mayo, your tomatoes, your lettuce, your cheese, and you know how a regular cheeseburger looks, right? Now, let's say if you wanted to turn that cheeseburger, which is a staple, into a passion product, right? So now maybe you get a little bit wild with the things that go on that cheeseburger. Maybe you have like a Hawaiian cheeseburger with pineapple on it. Maybe you have avocado on that cheeseburger. Maybe you want to put, I don't know, cayenne pepper on your cheeseburger. That's a, it's not a cheeseburger I would eat, but it's one of those things where you're starting to be a little bit more risky with your choices, right? And you're probably not going to get a predominant uh, market share that's going to go with that, you know, cayenne pepper cheeseburger. So that's what I'm talking about. The difference between are you creating a stable product? or a passion product. So you wanna be mindful of that as you move forward with your red team and creating your new product. So after you have like a prototype or uh, or a some type of mock-up of what that new product or service would be, mind you, then you wanna do like concept development and like testing. Basically you wanna do like maybe in-house focus groups, if you will, right? Maybe you wanna bring the red team back to kinda of see what that cayenne pepper burger tastes like. Or maybe you wanna bring in some industry influencers to kind of see what they think about your new product or service. That industry influencer is somebody like a blogger or, you know, in this case, it would be like a foodie or somebody, right? So you, you want to make sure you have that in place. Like I said, it's really just like an internal focus group, not something that, you know, you would have that you would have like your the marketplace kind of test because you don't want to have it put out there just yet. Now, we may talk about leaks a little bit later to kind of buzz interest, but this is not the point where you want to do that, Startup Nation. And so when you're doing this part, you want to have a, a, a set of questions for them to ask. I guess we're going to stick with the burger theme. You know, does the product taste good? Uh, do, is, it, is, it too, is it too risky? Is it too plain? Is it too simple? Is it, uh, you know, does it have the right, you know, the right texture? Does it have the right look? 
if you're real. Because believe it or not, it started me. I mean, come on, I don't have to tell you. We all we're in a safe place. I'm pretty sure to say we all eat food, right? And if something doesn't, and if food doesn't look right, nine times out of ten, you're not gonna eat it, right? So that that's a legitimate question. But you know, these are some of the things you want to have answered. When you have that that testing, that concept testing, if you will, feel free to bring in other small business owners on your concept testing. They don't necessarily have to be outside of the industry. But what I will say is that if you have new testing and this and the other, you may want to have like an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement being signed because you don't want leaks to get out you know, that you don't control or whatever, right? Because the thing is, leaks are a real thing, but you don't want to have leaks that you don't control. And so you may want to consider an NDA in this part of the process. Okay, after the concept development piece, then you want to kind of do a very thorough and rich analysis on the product. What do I mean by that? You want, you're you basically trying to figure out the product's viability if it's going to work in the marketplace. So you need to think about cost. What, are, what is it going to cost to make this product? What is the profit margin? What is the total market size that you're trying to capture with this new product? Because once again, you know, when it goes back to the product uh, staple versus product passion piece, you don't want to have something that costs so much money to make and you get a little bit of ROI and that's return on investment, right? So this analysis piece is crucial because this is where you you knock out all the rush, you knock out all the kinks, you knock out all the pricing measures that you need to have moving forward with the product. So this is the point where we actually start to develop the product. We, we put together all the you know the nuts and bolts we got our pricing in place we got our profit margins in place we start to this is the part where we start thinking about marketing and how we want to sell to the marketplace and then we also start to think about uh, if you're if you're not selling in-house and you're trying to sell, get into a walmart or a target or wherever the case may be whatever your product may be i guess you wouldn't sell like a burger the cayenne pepper burger in a target or a walmart but this is the part where you start to figure out where's a good target audience for my burger and so, and I'm glad I you know did say the Walmart target piece because one of the things you need to consider is the the idea customer of what a Walmart customer looks like and the idea customer of a target customer looks like. Your target cust your target customer by you know target I mean the company the big box store target. The target customer is a little bit higher end. That's why their price is a little bit higher. So you you know is your product gonna fit that? target audience forgive the pun is it going to fit that target audience in order for to be uh recept for them to be receptive to that or is your audience the more walmart uh approach meaning that th their ends not that is lower quality but the price point is a little bit lower it's a little bit more affordable right because walmart is the lower end of the spectrum when you talk about pricing that is not a slap in the face to walmart customers or target customers the thing is in business is that you're either going to be the high-end brand or you're going to be the affordability brand and both ways you can that you can make money okay it, it's a lot like you know uh team iphone and team android okay Team iPhone, you know, the iPhones are usually generally a little bit higher priced, okay? Android, however, is a little bit you know, lower priced, a little bit more affordable for the average consumer. That's why Android has the largest market share in the smartphone game because it's more affordable. But I'm pretty safe to say that both companies, both phones are hot sellers. Both phones make their companies a lot of money, correct? Okay, so don't think it's a slap in the face. It's just a matter of trying to figure out you know, where your target audience is going to be. And that's something that you want to start to think about when we talk about product development, when you try to talk about what target audience you want your product to be in front of. The next part is the actual market testing. Now, we talked about how you had like an internal focus group. This is where you'll do an external focus group. This is where you'll actually have like certain customers to kind of try out new products. Now, I don't think you necessarily have to have an NDA because the thing is, a lot of you know of your customers don't have like the resources or the channels to to leak it out to to the big press like your influencers would be right like the influencer put it on their blog or the foodie put it on their blog then clearly they have a nice influence to kind of get that out but nine times out of ten a customer you don't really have to get them to do an nda but anyway this is where you do like a focus group now the larger firms like the large companies they'll have like maybe like computer simulations and this that, and the other Startup Nation, most of you who listen to this show don't have that type of guap. You ain't got that type of money, and that's okay. 
what you want to do is what you kind of see at the mall, right? Where you have those those teenagers with those clipboards, like, and, and they bring you to in a room that you like twenty dollars or whatever. Those are the type of focus groups you want to be. Or if you just want to uh, set up shop in a mall with a kiosk and you bring over a few p- people at a time and you kind of get there feel on you know what do you think about this product do you think it's something that'll work is it something you will buy do, is it something that you know other people will buy those are the type of things you want to do when you talk about market testing you want to take it to the people take it to the people that you're going to potentially sell it to okay and lastly startup nation before we go to break commercialization this is where you bring the product to market and so it consists of put it in your store put it in the big box store like walmart or target like we talked about earlier making sure you have enough products to to service the demand that's been initially demanded for if you pumped it up right if you built up that buzz if you will now startup nation i will say that you know a lot of times that companies will purposely not have enough on demand in the initial get go and that's because they're trying to cause hysteria okay and, and that's okay like they, that that's one of those things where they're just trying to build up a buzz they're trying to build up anticipation now granted most of you aren't that big and that's okay so you want to make sure that you have the product in stock this and the other now if you have if you had the intention to have the product to meet the demand and it just overwhelms you that's a good thing okay and so you you're starting to see that you know if you sell out the first day then, you know, clearly you you've tapped into something. You've really, you know, got tapped into the a section of the market that's looking for what you just created. And that's a good thing. OK, but don't I, w- I wouldn't say don't purposely do it. But when you're a small business, the risk is higher for you than, say, your big box. Right. So one of the classic examples is when a new uh, console comes out. Right. Whether it be a new Nintendo, new Xbox, new PlayStation. Right. They have like the pre-orders. It, it goes out, let's say, November 22nd, and it sells out November 24th, right? And so they purposely only had a set amount of numbers, a uh, number of products, so that way they can kind of not only build anticipation, but kind of gauge the demand for it, okay? And so that's okay. But as the small business owner, I would suggest that, you know, go in with fidelity and try to make sure whatever you feel like the marketplace is going to bear for your old grand opening, that you make sure you produce that enough product for said grand opening. All right, Startup Nation, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. I hope you're getting great value from today's content. When we come back from break, we'll talk about a more detailed approach in launching your product, and then we'll finish up with the product life cycle. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson, and you're listening to The Startup Life. a teacher looking for great resources look no further than our teaching with owl section of our website enjoy great lessons such as our mini lesson for the story of an hour or dive into the nixon presidency as part of our legacy series enjoy great peace of mind from our units as they are common core aligned click the link in the show notes to purchase all right start up nation so let's continue so we talked about sparking the creativity in your brain in order to start creating that new product. Then we talked about the product development process. And now we're going to talk about more in detail about how to launch the new product, right? So the first thing you need to know when you're launching a new product, and this is especially from a marketing piece, if you will, is that you need to be proactive, okay? Before that product hits the shelves or hits your shelves or hits your website, you need to start sparking that buzz. You need to be proactive. You need to let people know something is coming or what is coming, if you will, right? Sometimes uh, in order to build even more anticipation, you just kind of kind of allude to something that's coming, but you don't say exactly what's coming. I think either way is fine, but just know that, you know, if you're not 
if you're not big time, that, that uh, kind of like secrecy model, if you will, may not work as much. Like if you're like Sony and you say Project X is coming, then like, oh my God, Project X is coming. I don't know where Project X is, but I'm buying it. Believe it or not, people are like that. But anyway, but you know, if you're a small firm, like most of you are startup nation, be mindful that you got to be proactive. You can't expect people to initially get what you're trying to do. You can't expect reporters or those influencers or those bloggers to instantly get what you do. So this is why we say, you know, have that testing model if you were to kind of get them to, you know, kind of spark you up and talk you up a little bit, right? Now, now, this is if you're not ready for it to come out just yet. But at this point, it's okay to start your outreach, to start like doing your marketing, your promo, having people write about it, get, letting the influencers kind of get their feel for it or whatever, right? The next thing you want to do is to make sure that those those influencers kind of, you know, really talk you up. Make sure they, they highlight the features. Make sure they highlight why the marketplace needs this or why the marketplace will want this or whatever right because the thing is they are your your eyes and they are your mouthpiece for your product right and the thing is you don't really have to pay them as much because the thing is uh influencers like that are they're looking for content they're looking for something to write it out so if they can say that they have their hands on the hot new thing that boosts their blog, that boosts their podcast, that boosts whatever their sphere of influence is. And so that's a win-win for everybody, right? And you don't really have to pay them a lot. Now, back in the day, what you would do is hire a PR firm. And some people still do that, right? But that's kind of an old way of marketing with social media in the digital age. Not many too many people are doing that type of marketing and you know uh, outreach, if you will, as much anymore. But either way, having those influencers and influencers and those people to kind of be your mouthpiece can go a long way to your pre-launch, even get your pre-sales uh, numbers, even, you know, uh, off the charts, if you will, and make those opening day numbers really shine for your company. Also, Startup Nation, you know, outside of just like, you know, giving the influencers your product or letting them experience your service, if you will, take, you know, try to get on people's shows, try to do a, a uh, edit, you know, a guest editorial, if you will, kind of highlighting, you know, the industry that your new product is going to enter. Get on somebody's podcast. You want to get on somebody's medium, you know, as to how they communicate to their audience. This is goes a long way to really pumping up and really marketing your new product before it even hits the shelves or hits your website. Because, you know, the point you're what you're trying to do at this point is to show people how passionate you are about this new product. Like, this new product is going to work because of X, Y, Z. You want this new product because of X, Y, Z. And so if people are excited by how you explain this to the marketplace and they understand why they will want or need your product, guess what they're going to do, Startup Nation? They're going to go out and buy it. Because what you're actually doing is selling the product. You're actually selling the product to the customer before it even hits the marketplace. So make sure you get in line with those industry uh, gurus and those industry influencers in order to kind of really get those pre-sale numbers popping. Also, and we talked about earlier about leaks. Sometimes leaks are okay. Sometimes leaks are on purpose. It's one of those things where it, it kind of builds uh, not just anticipation, but naughty anticipation, if you will. Because the thing is, underneath it all, people like rule breakers. They just do, right? And so if there's a, a, a sense of, not skepticism, but if there's a sense of naughtiness, you know, the like somebody leaked it out, like, no, we're not releasing that, this, that, and the other. You know, even though all indicators say that you are releasing something new, people underneath it all like that sort of thing. And that's okay. Uh, so, you know, if you're going to do leaks, just keep them at a minimum, right? Don't 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 have them coming out like every single week, right? Because after a while, it's just kind of like, you know, it, it, it's not as secretive. It's not as sexy. And it, it, it's one of those things where it's like, OK, we know what's about to happen. That's fine. And, and that anticipation and that and that passion for it is kind of gone. And your pre-sale numbers might suffer for that. Also, Startup Nation, you know, don't don't be prepared to do like this big bang release thing, right? Like when you're like one of those big, large companies, like if you're Amazon or if you're um, Apple, if you will, and you have these huge press conferences, if you will, you know, don't look to do that. Now, if you can do that on a small scale, by all means, but those type of big bang releases, if you will, only work for like the big boys. Okay. And we, and you know, and nine times out of 10, if you listen to the show, we haven't gotten there 
we haven't gotten to that point and that's okay but make sure you you do you know the grunt work you have you know you have your your marketing out there you, you're talking to influencers and you're being guests on people's podcasts or guest editorials or whatever the case may be right so uh like i said you you're not in the in the area just yet to have like the big steve jobs press conference but if you do those small things up front eventually you probably will be the next Steve Jobs in the sense of like, you know, press conferences as any other, right? Also, once the product releases, keep the ball rolling. Like those first maybe six to eight weeks, you want to keep doing the same thing you've been doing, right? You, you want to keep going on people's shows. You want to keep doing, you know, podcast episodes, you know, going on people's podcasts or going to people's mediums or, you know, whatever, however they reach their content, or however they reach their uh, audience, whatever the case may be. You want to keep doing that. You want to keep doing the marketing efforts because the thing is, it's kind of like, you know, this is your new baby and your new baby isn't ready to walk on their own just yet. So you got to get them what? You got to get them like the little baby walker and you got to get them like, you know, all the auxiliary people so they can kind of walk with support, right? That's what you're doing with your product. You're helping it to walk with support. And then eventually, eventually you'll you'll get to a point where it can kind of walk on its own. It can kind of sell itself, right? Because you, the marketplace and the influencers and everybody in the industry have seen that it's enough to say, hey, this really works, right? And the thing is that works in your favor at this point is the acronym FOMO, fear of missing out. The thing is a lot of times people want to be first on something so they can say, I was there from the beginning. And then after a while, the people that come after them, they want to hop on that board too. And it was like, man, I, I don't want to miss out. Everybody else doing it. There must be something to it. And so you want to get to that point, which is why it's critical to after the first six to eight weeks to keep pumping up your product, to keep producing the content, to keep making sure people know what your new product is all about. Also, Startup Nation, do something a little bit unusual with your marketing, right? Don't just do the whole, you know, you know the plain Jane market I'm talking about. Do something bold. Do something like a little mini movie. Now, you may say, Dominic, I don't have the budget for a mini movie. First of all, if you got a smartphone, yes, you do. When we have like Facebook Live and YouTube and all this other stuff, just pop that pop that camera on and just do something wild and make it like a short PSA or something to that regard. Now you can do it like those, if you wanna do one of those, like those artistry type of Calvin Klein gene commercials, if you will, that's totally fine. If that's your thing, then so be it. Or if you wanna do something funny, right? I think one of the cool things is the, what is the purple mattress, where they have the the lady with the, uh, you know, the kind of the Deutschland kind of clothes or whatever the case may be, promoting this new mattress. It's kind of off the wind, like what is, what is all of this have to do with mattresses, right? But at the very least, you're talking about it, and it's memorable, right? Not that a purple's mattress isn't already memorable, but but the, my point is this: is like you're doing something outside of the box. You're doing something outside of the norm. It's not your typical marketing, and that's something that stands out. It's like when you see people driving around in like these loud color cars promoting the business, right? Or like a really ugly car promoting the business, right? They're doing that so you can be like, God, that's an ugly car. Oh my, oh God, the, the, like the lights are so, like the color is so bright on that car or whatever, right? But if they're doing like a heating and air conditioning service and you have a heating and air conditioning needs, I guarantee you that's the first people you're going to think of because it sticks out, right? So make sure you, you do something a little, little, little bit cool, a little bit, you know, outside of the box when it comes to your marketing. Also, you know, if you've been doing your networking startup nation, Get your people involved. Build up that networking team that you've built. When you know we talked about in uh, becoming a networking guru. If you've been going out and you've been meeting new people and you've been investing in them, like we talked about, if you've been investing in them, like you know, this is the time where you've built up enough capital. Now it's time to make a deposit. So get those people involved. Get your your uh, your uh, your network professional network involved. Right? They can put stuff on their social media feed. They can put flyers in their business. They can make sure they pump you up and talk you up just like you did with them. See, I told you that networking and investing other people will come back to your favor. This is where you start to make that withdrawal startup nation. And also another thing you need to do is make sure that people 
that it's easy for people to learn about what you do. If you have to go on this long winded, complicated narrative to explain how your product, how your product works. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, my friend. Like it's, 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 it's probably not going to work. Right. Or at the very least, like, you know, your product should be able to be, you should be able to describe your product just like you describe yourself in an elevator pitch. It should take no longer than about 15 to 20 seconds for people to understand. Now, if you're like launching a new website where you're like had to go through a whole lot of steps, th- that's a little bit something different, right? But to, the, like the 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 general gist of it, it shouldn't take you 60 min- 60 seconds to explain what it is that it does. It just shouldn't, right? And so let's say it is really complicated, like you're launching a new website to provide a service or whatever the case may be, right? And you're trying to get people to buy that $15 subscription for you. You may want to like, you know, on your YouTube channel or your Vimeo channel or Facebook Live, wherever the case may be, create like tutorial videos for your for that new product. Right. You know, and maybe even give out a little demo if your product allows for that. Right. This not only lends credibility for the new product or service, you're you're establishing rapport with the potential marketplace. You're letting them know that we want to help you succeed with our new product. We want you to succeed with our new service. So be mindful of that. Be let the people know that you're willing to teach them about your new product, not lecture them because people don't like to be lecture to but teach them to be a partner in their success with your new product and lastly startup nation when we're talking about like social media and this and the other and launching that new product do not equate likes and shares to revenue generating at practices okay just because somebody likes or shares something doesn't necessarily mean they're going to buy okay like you can have all the likes and shares in the world but at the end of the day you got to close the deal so clearly we need to do something in order to get them to close the deal. Like, cause unfortunately we have too many, uh, small business owners who say, yeah, I got a thousand likes, but I got two sales. And so it's like, you know, we need to do something a little bit different. Now I get it. Like, you know, sales is a numbers game. I understand that. But at the same time, there's something in that marketing piece that's not closing the deal. It's getting them excited about it, which is why they're liking and they're sharing. Right. But at the same time, we need to we we need to maybe rethink that marketing piece because nine times out of ten, there's something in that marketing piece that's not closing the deal. Once again, sales like that is a numbers game. And if somebody likes an idea, they may be mildly interested. And if they share it, they may be a little bit more interested, but that doesn't necessarily equate to buys. So you be mindful of that. Keep on the push, keep marketing or whatever, right? Just because you got a like a thousand likes and, and five hundred shares. Doesn't mean the cash register is going to ring. And lastly, Startup Nation, before we wrap up for the day, it's very important for every entrepreneur to understand the product life cycle. Because the thing is, is that eventually your product won't be popping no more. It just won't. Eventually, people are going to move on to something else. Eventually, your competitor is going to be like, oh, okay, guess what? I got more resources. I produce more revenue. My profit margins are higher. I guarantee you I can produce a better product, same type of product, but I bet I can do it better than they did. And so you need to be mindful of that startup mission. That's why we're going to talk about the product life cycle. So the first part of the product life cycle is the introduction. We talked about that a little bit as far as like the marketing piece, getting out there, marketing costs, you know, the first few weeks, if you will, when uh, developing a new product or putting the product out there on the shelves, if you will. This is the part where, you know, the intellectual property rights have been taken care of and the product may be a lot of times people pr- price the product a little high to kind of recoup the the developing and the R&D costs that it went on the front end. But you'll notice after a while how that price starts to come down. And we'll talk about that. The next part of the product life cycle is the growth phase. We just talked about the introduction phase, but now you're in the growth phase. It's at this point where the marketplace has seen your product enough and they have accepted your product. And now sales are growing each month, each quarter, each year, whatever the case may be. How long the growth phase lasts is really up to the marketplace. It depends on, uh, you know, are there new markets out there for you to capture? Are there new demographics out there for you to capture? Uh, so it's one of those things where it's not really defined or set in stone how long the growth phase is or for any phase for that matter. But the growth phase lasts as long as there's room for it to grow. Let's say you've saturated the market in the U.S. and now you need to move uh, 
try to move product over to the UK to try to grow in that market, to try to grow in the Indian market, to try to go in the Southeast Asian market, right? Or even the Latin America market. The thing is, is that you're you're looking for a, as many places to grow the product and that market share as much as possible. Now, the next phase after the growth phase is the maturity phase. This is the part where sales start to level off. People start to, you know, understand that everybody has what you just sold everybody has what the new product is and there's a sense a clear sense of saturation i i I believe you know a great example of that is the iphone now like there's a lot of people with iphones and so smartphones in general especially the iphone those sales have started to slow a little bit not saying that they're not making a lot of money because they are it's just that sales are at a point where they've just basically plateaued so this is the part where you want to start uh, maybe slashing those prices a little bit, maybe come out in different colors. You've noticed that that the iPhone and other products that they start to do that. They start to come out with different colors. They start to come out with different price points. They start to come off, come up with different upgrades. Uh, uh, w- going back to the gaming console example, that's when you start to see like the PlayStation come in red, blue, white, yellow, or the Xbox comes with a very special limited edition controller based off a game theme or something like that. So that lets you know that that product is in the maturity phase. They're trying to figure out every, they're basically trying to squeeze every single juice out that orange that they possibly can. Right. And so that's what the maturity phase looks like. And then after that, and also in the maturity phase, you start to see more and more competitors come into the marketplace. Now you start to see, uh, you know, up and you know, up and coming gaming consoles or up and coming startups to try to capitalize off your you know great product, and they will do that. And what that looks like is like not necessarily a knockoff, but they'll have something similar to the point where you know this thing is just as good and is half the price. I know you've heard this notion before. That's where that comes from. And so your, your, your competitors and other startups may try to come in and they're, go, they're coming for the crown for sure. And so that's what the maturity phase starts to look like. And then after that, you start to hit the decline phase. That's when your revenue starts to decrease a little bit because it's like very high saturation in the market. Very uh, long list of competitors that have, emig- have entered the marketplace. Let me just be honest about this. The marketplace has grown bored with your product right now granted this whole that whole life cycle could have taken two years it could have taken 16 years it can take 50 years it really depends on the marketplace and so when you talk about uh you know going once again like that that uh stable consumer staple of a consumer uh passion product like for instance like a consumer passion product is like coca-cola like the red can you know, easy peasy red Coca-Cola can like every, you know, a lot of people drink it. It's not going away. It's highly consumable. This, that, and the other. But so for those of you who are around in the nineties, do you remember that drink called Surge? Yeah. We don't see that too often, do we? That's because that was one of those things that Coca-Cola tried to bring out and it didn't really work too well. And, and so, you know, that's, like I said, that's one of those examples of a, a consumer passion product that like, you know, you're trying to regain excitement in the marketplace or you're trying to launch a new product but it 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 just doesn't go well right and so with that being said you know when you're in the product life cycle you know keep in mind this is just for one product an ideal entrepreneur an ideal company is want to have multiple products to be in different phases of that cycle so that way it speaks to a a long-term sustainability model of not just producing products but also producing products that will stand the test of time so here's my final take when you're launching a new product you're going to have some misses but your ultimate goal is to create something that the marketplace either really needs or really 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 wants and that's the idea of launching a new product you want to start off by like i said sparking the brain for creative ideas then you want to think about that development piece make sure you have your red team in place to make sure they poke holes in your idea it's not Don't feel personal when they poke holes in your idea is to make your product or idea better. And then you want to think about that ultimate launch of the product. You know, make sure the marketing in place, maybe sure 
you you know you have those influences in place make sure you're using your network and your team to their fullest potential to maximize the product knowledge and the awareness of your new product and also lastly entrepreneurs you want to understand the product life cycle and that you need to have multiple products not all not a whole bunch of products you don't need that you know because we're a small business still right like now if you're like you know the big time fortune 500 companies you may have 20 50 100 products in the product life cycle but if you're a small firm you know one to two products in the product life cycle is a good idea because you're trying to raise that buzz and ultimately you're trying to produce revenue and i believe if you take all these steps that you will launch a new product and you will launch it to a very high degree of success so that's going to do it for this episode of the startup life i hope you got great value from today's content startup nation look launching a new product is actually a fun thing to do but like any other fun thing it still needs to have a process in place and because keep in mind you're still running the business and you still need to run the business right if you want to let us know what you think about our show have an idea for a show topic or would like to advertise on our show send us a message on the start of life podcast facebook page and while you're there like and follow our page as well it's a new way for us to engage with you startup nation and really grow our community the link is here in the show notes subscribe to the startup life as it can now be heard on itunes google play stitcher radio tune in radio iheart radio and soundcloud a very good review is appreciated as it helps more people find our show and hey if you have an idea be about that life the startup life